Hello once again, it's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher, and this is part four of the series that I have been making on the Essex hot air engine, trying to get it run. And be sure and watch the first three parts, and I'll put the, uh, the link down in the description, and I'll show you a shot of the uh, title page for one of those uh, videos, if you want to go back and look at those, because this may not make a whole lot of sense if you have not seen the other ones. But before I start, I want to talk a little bit about some of my homemade Stirling engines, and I also made a recent video on these, but I want to show you a couple more things in regards to these, because I'm selling all of this stuff, and if I don't show you now, it's gone forever, so... Here's a picture of the title page for a recent video that I made of my Sterling engine. Check that out again as well. And then I'm going to talk about these and then I'm going to finally get to this. Okay, let's go. Okay, be sure and watch the first three parts of the Essex hot air engine. This is part three. You may recall that in that recent video I showed you the cover of the book and I said I have this engine but I cannot find it well. Ta-da! I did find it, so let's run it real quickly. This is a commercially made Sterling engine. I don't know if you can still buy them. I doubt it. Note the die cast base. That's the name of it. They're really quite a nice model. I think they're kind of expensive. And the reason I'm showing you this besides running it, just showing it off I guess, is that this is the basic configuration on which I based the design of this series of engines that I made side by side. I think you can see that there is a lot of similarity. And I am fully aware that 99.5% of the people in the world have never heard of a Sterling engine and could care less. I like the rather clever design of this engine. I can pull the burner out like this. Notice there's a little well down here to put your fluid and I, use, I like to use denatured alcohol. Not for children to play with. Now I'll light it and see you in a minute. It takes about a minute to heat up. And you can see it runs like a Singer sewing machine. Now let's run this one. Nah, that doesn't fit under there. That's why I got this up on a piece of wood, because now the sterno can will fit right under there. But this is not sterno fuel, this is denatured alcohol in here. And by the way, what's the deal with denatured alcohol now costing $10 for a gallon? Actually, that's not expensive at all. It's just that a dollar is worth a dime. See you in two minutes. By the way, the crank on here, as opposed to this one, is a Scotch yoke. I believe I mentioned that in another video. Well, it's been about three months since I made the last video, and now it's uh, the beginning of February 2022. And there is uh, 12 inches of snow outside, so I'm in the toasty basement. Well, it's not that toasty. It's 60. i got to wear a coat down here. But I keep it at 75 upstairs, as I suppose you do. Now, for the sake of convenience here in the basement, I have removed the cooling tank. Remember what that looks like. Look in the other videos. I have also taken off the fuel tank, which goes up on the top of this pipe. 
and I'm going to start taking it apart but before I do that I want to do some other tests with smoke and bubbles and all of that to check for a leak. I do believe there is a leak someplace. I had wonderful comments from rather knowledgeable people in regards to what I did in the other videos and most of them suggested it was a leak or it's binding or oh that I need to replace the entire burner with a propane so there was a lot of great suggestions I'm very hesitant to change the original characteristics of this engine I also believe that this is a rare Essex because I haven't seen any with this kind of water system and I do believe this is factory and you'll see why as I go along I also believe the burner is factory some people disagree the oiler is definitely added by Bubba. The reason I say that is that it leaks like crazy here. The wall thickness, which I'll show you in a second, of this cylinder is not thick enough to accommodate a pipe thread, even though it's only eighth inch. So that's why there's a leak there. I need to plug that permanently. But we believe collectively that somebody put this in because it ran so poorly they wanted to lubricate it. In fact, they over lubricated and that causes somewhat of a problem while you're running too. If it gets too hot down here, the oil gets sticky. I use graphite in those other little engines that I showed you a few minutes ago. All right, let me take this off and show you what I discovered. Obviously someone added this drip boiler. Although I didn't think of that myself till somebody gave me some suggestions on that. So looking here now, let me zoom in just a little bit if you will. And you can see that that is the piston you're seeing there. So there are only a couple threads of engagement there, and some of the threads actually are on the fin. So that's why I can't plug that, and if I put a plug in too far, it will hit the piston. So I think I would like to fill that with some goop like, uh, uh, what is it, that, that gray epoxy stuff, weld something, some kind of weld. I'm not going to do that just yet, but I think that needs to be done. However, I did find here this little nylon fixture here out of a gas tank that I can use to block this as I perform some of the experiments here that you'll see. So that's what that is. I, was, I couldn't get a steel plug. I got all kinds of plugs here. Where are they? I didn't want to even take the chance of cracking the casting by forcing in this little pipe plug, so I used brass. Well, that didn't work as well as I thought it would, so that's why I'm using plastic. But you can see what the problem is there. Well, there's the piston again, and as you recall in the other video, if you saw it, we know that Bubba's been in here and done all kinds of modifications with a hammer. Yes, with a hammer. Now I'd like to clear out the bore just a little bit and uh, see what the problem is in there. Oh wait, there's something stuck in there. The heck? Oh, Bubba was here. Yeah, well, that's pretty obvious. Okay. And I can feel a little bit of that nylon in here with my finger. I will plug this up now. You saw me use this before. It's the only cork I have that is that large off of one of my electrical pieces of apparatus. And the cork rubber cork is very hard it's just so old but still even when I put like a couple pounds of pressure I'm only going to use three or four pounds of air pressure it'll pop that out needless to say so I've found that that keeps it in place that's the purpose of that well now I have a piece of hose here 
and I can get just a little bit of vacuum in there. Maybe you can hear that, but it won't hold the vacuum. It should hold the vacuum. It needs to be sealed. The whole unit has to be sealed, as you well know. Well, I was going to use my Mighty Vac, but it's not so mighty anymore. I have two of them, and both of them failed. Well, this is a piece of punk, so I'm going to do a smoke test here in a second, see if we can determine any faults. Let me tell you a story about the punk. I've had this for about 10 years, so we're traveling in Missouri. You know, you can't buy fireworks in Illinois that are amount to anything, so I stopped down there where there are no rules. You know, here in Illinois, you can't buy fireworks or uh, firearms are very tightly controlled, and that's why we have no murders or crime here anymore in Illinois, so I guess it's a good thing. But anyway, I'm in the fireworks store, and I, uh, I just went up and asked the lady behind the counter, do you have any punk? And she says, yeah, look at these punks. And there were three men kind of standing around there flirting with her. They looked kind of uh, foreboding. So <laughs> I got a chuckle out of that. But then she sold me a pack of punk. So let's see what I can do with this. Okay, using this source of smoke here. First of all, I'll sniff around this thread. Nothing, and I am... Um, sucking on this, trying to get a vacuum. But now I'm going to blow. Hmm. Nothing. Now I'm going to use compressed air, and I just had three or four pounds of pressure there, not much. And I'm going to use Harvey's all-purpose gas leak detector. Well, it says all-purpose, so it must work on Sterling's. Nothing leaking around that thread. I'm going to spray some more up in here. Okay, put some more Harveys on there, and that's three or four pounds of pressure, and you can see that there is a little bit of a leak there, but it doesn't look like much, does it? That is, it doesn't look like enough to keep the thing from running. However, what I'm going to do now, there are three or four screws here, I'm going to take those out and I believe this end of the cylinder will come off so we can take a look at that look for damage or I, that way I can examine the bore a little bit better and there might be a gasket in here I'm not sure I knew it I knew it I knew that if I lived long enough I would finally have a use for these offset screwdrivers because this is a tight place to get into Okay, while you went to the refrigerator, I was working hard, and I took the rest of the engine off of the base. And this screw was quite rusty because it was under the coolant area. But now I am able to examine the burner a little bit more closely. And see if that needs any attention. So let's take a look at it real quickly here. I had no idea it would look like that in here, but look at the soot. We, many viewers said, well, it's all sooted up. And you're right, there is no shortage of soot. So at some point, I think I'll take this apart. I got just a little bit ahead of myself there. But on this cylinder, there is no gasket here. I really thought there would be. So it just depends on having the screws good and tight. Remember, the pressure in there would never be that great. Not as great as the compressed air that I put in there. Yeah, I don't know, it would be half a pound or something. Almost insignificant. But the actual bore here, 
does not really look bad at all. I mean, it's not like there's major scoring or anything like that in there. And you've already seen the piston. We examined that in the other video. So I'll get this cleaned up real well. Quite greasy. Okay, this is the rod that operates the displacer. And I unscrewed that. And many people were worried about the, the wear right here on this rod and there appears to be very little and it did not leak because I did a smoke test on that and a bubble test and there doesn't appear to be any wear there that amounts to anything. And looking down the bore here you can see the displacer I've showed that before and it moves very freely there is no binding at all and there should be a lot of room, not a lot, but there should be space between the cylinder and the displacer itself. It is not a tight fit like a piston. It's nothing like a piston. It is not a piston. It's a displacer. Okay, many commenters said, and we're looking up into the furnace area now, they said you probably got soot in there. Well, you aren't kidding. I'm going to dump all that soot out just to show you how much is in there. And I suspect that that is acting as an insulator. Okay, I quickly gave that a once-over. I will blow it out. i got to take it outside to blow it out. But look at how much soot was in there. Now, I might point out that this appears to be lined with asbestos. Do not call the authorities on me please. I know what you're thinking. You fool! Why didn't you take all the plumbing off? Because it's most clumsy here on the bench and I did intend to do that but I would like to clean it up a little bit, put it back together and see if it runs with what I have done to it. And That's why I haven't taken this apart because you know it's not going to be easy. I see a lot of rust down there. But anyway, I went outside into the snow and I blew this out and there was considerable soot that just went everywhere. I made the mistake of giving it a quick puff down here in the basement and, you know, I look like a chimney sweep within a matter of a second. So anyway, that's cleaned out. You can see the asbestos in there that lines the furnace. Now I cleaned this up just a little bit, although it, I know it doesn't look like it. But, let's take again a look at the piston here. And this brass part, which I accused them above of putting on, is factory. Several people told me that. And it's just to, it's not a displacer, but it's used to take up, use up some of the space in there. I know I didn't explain that very well. But it is smaller than the bore. But you can see this cast iron piston, it does have quite a good fit. Very good fit. It has to be a close fit, but it cannot bind. Again, I don't know why this is so beat up, but it does fit in here. If I can get it in the frame for you, like that. But it obviously rubs in a couple places because in the last video I told you I put some bluing on it and then reinstalled it to see where it was rubbing and there's several spots there where it's rubbing. That is not good but this is very thin. It's not like I can put it on the sander and sand some off or put it in the lathe. I'm very hesitant to do that because I probably would break through this thin wall of brass which is really as thin as this which is now it's thicker than foil, but not a whole lot. Now I know I could take this casting off as well. I'm hesitant to do that again if I don't need to do it. So I'll wait till later and see if it's necessary. But the next thing I want to tackle here, although I could do a test run without the regular alcohol burner, but I actually think I would like to go ahead and hook this up without the engine over it and see if I can make the burner work properly. So I believe that's what I'll do next and most of that will be done off camera but I think I'll go outside and blow this off as well. 
Alrighty, it's about a half hour later and I have the fuel tank attached above this. You can't see it. And in there I'm using white gas, which I believe now is the best fuel for this. I've tried the other ones, you've seen that. And actually, surprisingly enough, oh by the way, be very careful. I did put alcohol in the bowl here for a preheat, but you cannot see an alcohol flame, so it can be dangerous. It's very, matter of fact, I did singe the hair off my hand, but who cares? Okay, so actually I'm getting a little bit better flame there, I think, than what I ever did. But there should not be a tinge of orange on it at all. Someone suggested that Bubba reamed out the orifice and it is too large. We know it's not too small, but look at the flame. Now I don't think that should be a, I think it should be a blue flame. Like my old six cylinder Chevy. Blue flame six that is. But anyway, there's quite a flame here now compared to what there used to be. So it's, I did blow that off. Did I, did I say that or not? As well as the other part. I did blow this all out, although it wasn't all that bad, really. Most of the soot was up in the chimney. So I'm halfway attempt, uh, tempted here to clean this up a little bit. Remember, I never intended a full-blown restoration. But you can see that's all oil. So I'll get that cleaned up. And I believe that I will reassemble it off a of camera as soon as this cools down a little bit and try it, see what happens. And uh, that could be the end. If it runs, that could be the end of this video. If not, it will be a continuation. So I'll be back in 45 minutes. Be very careful with all of these fuels that I'm using here. But look, at that's, that's a nice blue flame right there, isn't it? Okay, it's one hour later. I've totally reassembled it. I used graphite in the bore rather than oil, which is what I use in my others engines, but I absolutely cannot get it to run using the white gas burner. So I hooked up the water tank and I got it to run a little bit on the propane and I'm going to show you that in a second. The reason I didn't film any of that with uh, this burner is because I didn't think you would want to see a grown man cry. But what I can't understand now, even though I have cleaned all the pipes that I'm not getting by thermosiphon much circulation because this is still warmer than what it should be and this is warm until I get right up here next to the tank. So I think I probably got a clog in here even though you saw me clean that out. Well, let me warm it up again and run it on propane, show you what I got, and that's all I can do for today. This has already been a pretty long video. Okay, she's running quite nicely now on propane as you can see. But it should not take that much heat. It should not require that much heat because that's a pretty hot flame. And I'm injecting it right into this hole. But as you can see, it does run pretty nicely on this propane flame. Well, that's all for today. I can take no more. I've been working at it for four or five hours. I am a little bit encouraged here the last few minutes, but I am overly, overall rather discouraged and wish I had stayed in the bed the day that I bought this. Buyer's remorse? You bet. Well, that's all for this part four. Hopefully there will be a part five, so keep watching. This is Mr. Pete saying so long for now. I'm going upstairs to watch Hogan's Heroes, which is more fun than what I've been doing the last 15 minutes. 
just a little bit of an afterthought here or an extra credit that this pipe right here is ice cold because the water coming into the house now is <laughs> it's, it's February so it's very cold water coming into the house so this is just so cold I can't stand to touch it this is just medium and then I can feel that this is warm all the way up to the union here so there is a circulation right now by thermosiphonic action so that is okay that is not the problem well that's the end of extra credit see you next time